So now what we're going to want to do is convert this schematic into a PCB design. So we're going to use the option here which is convert and then we're going to convert to PCB. Now this is where you get a warning message saying that do you wish to check the nets or do you want to just keep on going and ignore. Now what it means by that is all the networks that you have set up so as far as ground, VCC and everything that's connected to these pins. So what we're going to do is choose yes and then this takes us into the design manager and you'll notice we've got a whole bunch of red crosses which mean that they aren't compliant and we're going to have to fix that. In our case this is not an actual genuine error because what it's meaning is that these aren't connected to anything so these pins are just floating. So there is a thing for that in the wiring tools there's a no connect flag. So we're going to have one here which is just the other pin off the barrel jack and then we can go around and just specify that these other pins aren't connected to anything. If we do that, if we do a save again and then we can just click the refresh icon here and there you go and that shows that we've got four networks so we've got the five volts coming in and when you click on that it highlights the wiring which is five volts. We've got the ground again that does that. We've got the LED there and then we've got the center joining section of the LED there. So now if we go to the converter PCB it's automatically created the board outline which is this purple item and then it's created the Wemos D1 Mini, the LED, the capacitor, resistor and the barrel jack. And this is where you get a representation of the size and whether you've chosen the right component. So you need to select the component and it'll go grey when it's fully selected and we're going to put the barrel jack down there. We're going to move the Wemos and we're going to put them here. It's a pretty luxurious size board. We're going to put the input capacitor pretty close to the power input. I'll tell you what we'll do. Again as before if you use spacebar you can rotate things around. Now by default you have a two layer board so you can have things on the top of the board or you can have things on the bottom of the board. You can note here on the layers and objects we've got a small pencil on the red layer there which means that we have we're editing that top layer. If you want to edit the bottom layer we can move there and then that would be in blue and red is for the top layer. What you can also do is where you've got the different layers for say the silk screen bottom layer if they're getting in the way when you design your PCB as it gets more complicated you can just basically untick that and then you can make those disappear or come back. And the same goes for things like the board outlines and other things. So we're just roughly going to move these into where we want them. Okay. And if we rotate this guy around. Okay. So what you'll notice is that there's these small blue lines and those exist because we've done the work already in the schematic and we know what needs to be connected to what. And so then the program knows as well. So if we zoom in here, we can see what needs to go to where. So this is handy for ensuring that you get all the connections done, you don't miss anything out. And this is why we go into the schematic instead of going straight into the PCB design. One thing you might want to change before you get too far down the PCB design is to check the units that you're using on your canvas. Now, by default, it sets it a mil. If you're in the States, maybe you could set that as inch, or I prefer to set it as millimeter. And then it gives a much better representation of what the size is and when you resize things and such like. So we move the resistor without moving the label. This is one thing in the software that you're able to move the label and the component separately so you just got to be careful. So what we want to do is just to make sure that the PCB is no bigger than what it needs to be. So we're just going to select the right hand side of the board outline and we're going to pull him right in and that makes the PCB a lot smaller. Again as with the schematic you can right click and you can move around if needs be. So similar to before we have a design manager here which shows the DRC errors in the networks and as we can see 
these networks aren't complete so they've got a red cross through so what we need to do is go through and link everything up now there's two ways to handle this you can either do this via manually connecting everything or you can use what's called an auto router now auto routing is frowned upon but I guess it has its place so I'll show you how you would do that so you need to go up to the root option here and then you would go to auto router and then at its most simple you can just click run and then this is going to go off and it will say that it's attempted 11 connections and it's completed 11 connections and then so what we'll notice is that there is two different colors on the connections so we have a red connection here which as we can see is on the top layer and we have a blue connection which is on the bottom layer and that becomes extremely useful when your board starts getting more complicated and you want to route things around and then you need to try and fit things in if we go back to net and we refresh that you'll notice that there's no errors now and they are connected and you could argue that the circuit is complete there not many people use auto router though and most people will go through and manually route the connections so if we want to manually place a track if we left click and highlight this track it'll just do this one segment from there we delete that and you'll notice you've got that direct point to point line which shows that that's not connected and if you did a refresh we could see that there's an error on the 5 volt line so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the track tool now we've got two options on the track tool because we've got two sides to the PCB so we can lay this on the top now you can manually choose the pencil icon and then you can see that the tracks on the bottom get highlighted more than the ones on the top or the other way to do it is you can do B which is for bottom T for top so we're going to do this on the bottom again where it was before and then you'll notice we can route that through there and then straight to there what you will find is that if you try and route your network to a pin that it hasn't been set up for or is not designed for in the schematic it's not going to let you connect that there so if we did a connection from here you'll notice it's not going to connect into this pin or it'll not let you go through this other track as well so we can just escape there which means we're not going to lay that down one thing you can do to visually check to see how things are going is you can do a picture representation so we can do if we save that so we're going to have to save it to our existing project we're going to call it Wemos LED save that there so we're going to go to the preview and then the photo view and that is what the board would look like when it's printed out the white segments are going to be the silk screen here we've got a blue PCB you can change the board color just to see what it would visually look like I always think that's mustard rather than yellow and then you can do a black PCB so so in its most basic form that's our PCB created and ready to to go off with what you can do though if you wish you can put in different text if you wanted to put a label or a logo on if you want to import an image so we're just going to put some text and you'll notice that the text is reversed there and that's because I'm on the bottom layer so that's just how it would be represented so we change to the top layer unfortunately it doesn't realize that you've clicked that so if you right click there if we click text again we can put that there if you right click again get rid of that and we're going to call this board Wemos LED with a capital D as well okay so if we save this if we go back to the photo view Wemos LED is going to show up but I've made an error there I did not have the correct layer selected when I was putting text on the board and I've done this before so you can click there and then you can see in the top right hand corner the layer we're going to want to put that on the top silk layer and then you'll notice it changes the color to yellow or gold the same as the other silk layer text so if we save that go to photo view and then you can see that's how it would turn out 
previously they were just basically going to put copper down and so you would be able to see it but be very tricky and you couldn't have routed tracks through there because it would have been a copper track itself really just watching guys i hope this has been of some use and what i'll maybe do is follow up with a, another more advanced video in the future so in some showing some of the further techniques that you can use in the software and different options that you can choose such as stencil and things like on the checkout. Please feel free to like, subscribe and catch you later.